So I, this is a, a real exciting session. Appreciate everyone's participation today. Um, you know, I know one of the big questions for everyone is what's going on with US News and World Report and their, their survey. And, you know, we'll kind of talk about um, the timeframes and, and what's happening with US News uh, on that too. But um, as a communications major, as an undergraduate, I know you always save the most important stuff that people want to know to the very end. That way we maintain their interest in the beginning. So at the beginning, we're going to talk about uh, CAMI's annual report process, which is how do you get data into our annual report tool? And then also look a little bit about benchmarking as well, which is a really new, cool tool that we're offering available for any accredited program that's free. It's part of being you know, a CAMI accredited program. So um, I'll do a, a short introduction. Michelle will go on and talk about editing information into the annual report and then how to run some benchmarks on the fly to compare yourself to uh, organizations that you want to compare to. And then I'll come back and give you an update on US News and World Report where the survey is, what the timeframes are, and then we'll open it up for any questions that you have for us. So with that, let me introduce Michelle, who will go through CAMI's annual report, and uh, I think most of you are familiar with her. So Michelle, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Anthony. And Hello everyone, thank you all for joining us today and taking time out of your, your summer vacations to join us. Um, so as you know, my name is Michelle Petroselli and I'm the accreditation coordinator uh, at CAMI. So uh, today um, I'll be reviewing why the annual report is an important part of the CAMI accreditation process. Um, and I will also be giving an update on the annual report process itself. Um, so let's begin a quick overview of um, the purpose of CAMI's annual report. So the annual survey is a critical part of being an accreditor. Uh, it's how CAMI ensures that programs continue to meet um, CAMI standards. Uh, therefore, the annual report is required of every accredited or certified program. Now, last year, um, the board passed policies that also state um, that programs in candidacy uh, need to complete at least one year worth of annual report data before a site visit um, or site visit date is defined. Um, and it isn't in the past, programs that submit on time avoid, avoid those late fees. Um, it is also required of CAMI by CHIA or the Council on Higher Education Accreditation. Um, CHIA and the US uh, Department of Education requires accreditors to make data such as outcomes um, and site visit results available public, publicly. Um, in addition, uh, think tanks such as um, the Institute for Higher Education Policy, the Lumina Foundation, the McNair Foundation, uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation are, are focused on higher education outcomes and transparency. Uh, with that said, the annual report also closely aligns with CAMI's five core values, specifically excellence and transparency. Okay, so now on to CAMI's annual report editor. So last year, CAMI developed CARE, CAMI's annual report editor, um, to simplify the survey process. Um, this tool is great. It allows for programs to, to one, uh, print off uh, the annual report data. It allows programs to open and close different report sections. Three, it shows historical responses for comparison to aid um, in entry of the current annual report data. Um, and then four, it gives programs the ability to enter data for the most recent um, academic year and edit, and edit previous year's data if corrections need to be, to be made. So this is a, the CARE um, annual report profile page. Okay, so another um, great feature of CARE is that it is built to directly interface with the public data. So this, this illuminates our um, CAMI's core value of transparency. Uh, the annual report data entered in CARE is published live on CAMI's advanced search tool. Now, of course, not 
not all the data in the annual report is public because some of it is related to CAMI's annual um, accreditation review of your, of your program. And also note that, um, that only accredited, certified, and candidate programs um, with complete annual report data will have their, public, uh, their data public on the search tool. Another uh, new feature um, of CARE, um, and, uh, the annual report data um, entered into CARE is also utilized by CAMI's newest tool, um, CAMI's annual report benchmarks, um, CARB. Um, and CAMI's accredited, certified candidate and applicant programs with complete annual report data will have access to this new tool. Um, and I'll go into further depth um, discussing this tool uh, later in the webinar. Okay, so some updates in CARE, um, there's just a few. Um, in section nine, the uh, contact section of the annual report, um, accredited programs um, can add a second contact for the US News and World Report survey. And uh, more on this later. Um, and then there's a new section, section 10, that will require program directors to verify and submit annual report data. Uh, so every program is required wired to complete this section before the annual report due date. Uh, once again, more on this, um, this section later. Um, and then in section three of the annual report, you will now only need to enter total academic hours required for graduation. Um, instead of dividing the hours into face-to-face, -face, online, hybrid, or elective hours, so uh, once again, you'll only need to enter total academic hours required for graduation. And then most importantly, this tool is more, is, is more user-friendly. Uh, the, the biggest update we have, which I know all of you will be happy about, is that you no longer need to write the word zero um, in specific fields. You can just enter the number zero. So more user-friendly. That was a priority for us this year. So, <laughs> so, um, so yes. Yeah, so let's get on to how to use care. So this will be a refresher of what we discussed last year. Um, I'm going to walk you through uh, the following steps on how to access the, the care tool, and then we're going to review the login process, preparation of data the data entry process, and then how to save, review, and submit data. Okay, so to access CARE, it's quite simple. You first go to cami.org, and then on the website, it's pictured here, you will click on the accreditation management bar right in the middle, um, which will show you a drop-down menu. And then at the very bottom of that drop-down menu is the CARE icon, it's yellow. Um, you'll click on the care icon and that will lead you to the care logon page, which looks like this. Um, so once you get to the login page, you'll follow these five easy steps to log into your program's annual report homepage. Uh, and just a reminder, do not copy and paste emails, passwords, program codes into these login boxes. The tool, uh, it'll only accept responses that are typed directly into the login boxes. So once again, do not copy and paste. Um, okay, so first step, you will type in your director ID, which will be your, your email. And then note that um, each program will be given only one account or lo um, login credential, credential per program. So for example, if your university has two programs accredited or certified with CAMI, um, such as like one MS program or one MHA program, you'll have two accounts, two uh, CARE accounts. Okay, um, second, you will type in your program's unique code. Third, you will type in your password. Um, so any new or returning users, make sure that you personalize your password as well. Uh, fourth, you will click the capture box, and um, this is just a security step, so it allows our website to differentiate bots from uh, um, authentic users um, in order to stop spammers from hacking information, important. 
Um, and then fifth, uh, final step, click login, and this will lead you to your program's annual report page. Okay, so this is once again, a picture of the annual report page. Um, so before you begin to enter data in the care system, you can click the print PDF icon, which is located in the middle of your homepage to copy off um, a hard copy of your current annual report so that you could write in it ma uh, manually. Okay, and so this is what the report looks like once you press print. Um, and we recommend you print off a hard copy of the annual report to, to help you collect data for data entry. So I repeat, it's highly recommended that you print off a hard copy of the annual report to handwrite your annual report data on. Okay, so after you collect your information manually, you're now ready to enter the data into CARE. So on your program's annual report page, you can click on any section bar you wish to enter data in. Uh, once you click on any section bar, um, a drop-down menu of questions will appear. Now you, um, you will click um, the orange pen icon, see right there, uh, to view the drop-down or fill-in options. And then you, you can begin to enter data. Okay, so to save uh, your data, there are three steps. Um, first, you'll click the submit section button, the blue submit section button located at um, the bottom left-hand corner of each section panel. Um, and at this time, once you click that button, you'll be taken to another page. Second, you'll click the blue continue button in the middle of the page. And then you'll be taken back to your program's annual report page, uh, which brings us to our third and final step. You click the refresh button next to the search bar on your page, and then you'll be able to view your, your saved data. Um, after you saved your data, you click the section you just edited to make sure that the data was saved correctly. Okay, so this is uh, a new addition to CARE. To eliminate the need to survey program directors for the second contact needed for um, the US News and World Report survey, we simply added a question in CARE. Um, so in section nine, ca uh, contact information, program directors should enter the secondary contact for U uh, the US News and World Report survey. And of course, only US acc um, accredited programs need to complete this section. So only US accredited programs need to complete this section. Um, so per US News and World Report policies, each university may provide only two contacts. So if your program is in a university with two or more CAMI accredited programs, you will, you'll need to coordinate this with the other program director. Um, so once again, let me repeat, each university gets two votes on the US News and World Report survey. Okay, then also in this section, just complete all contact information. And that includes first, uh, first name, last name, prefix, suffix, title, and most importantly, email and phone number. Okay, so a, um, a new section in CARE is section 10, verifying and submitting data. Um, because this data is reviewed to ensure you are meeting accreditation standards um, and it is presented publicly, the Council on Higher Education Accreditation requires CAMI to have our programs verify the data. So in this section, you will first type, it's very simple, you'll first type in your initials, and then second, click the Verify and Submit Data button. Uh, and this will bring, a, you know, bring you to a final CAMI audit um, if there are questions uh, with the data, the CAMI team will be, will be in touch. Okay, and let's just, just review the best practice tips for using CARE. So it's very important that you follow um, these best practice tips to ensure that data is entered and saved correctly. So we highly recommend you work in only one section at a time. Uh, save your work in each section before pre 
um, proceeding to the next section. So the care tool does not save automatically. I repeat, it does not save automatically. So after you save, be sure to review your saved data before continuing in the same um, or other sections. Okay, and then the care tool is designed for you to directly type into the input fields. Um, we do not recommend that you copy and paste into care um, once again um, to ensure quality um, of data entry. So once again, do not copy and paste. And then um, finally, uh, make sure that you personalize um, your password. And I'll be sending a separate email on how to personalize your uh, password um, later on. Okay, so now very exciting, exciting news. Um, I am excited to announce that version 1.0 of CAMI's annual report benchmarks is now available. Um, and this, um, so once you log into CARE, into your CARE profile page, you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner, you'll, um, there's an icon um, and you'll click this icon, um, the CAMI annual report benchmarks icon. Once you click it, you'll access the tool. And here it is. Uh, so you'll be brought to the CAMI annual reports ben benchmarks page. Um, and on this page, you can customize your peer group. Um, so the first step is you will select the criteria filters. Um, and these filters include degree, mode, curriculum, regions, cohorts, uh, accreditation status, um, as well as track. Um, and then the second step, you will select the academic years that you want to display for your program. Um, and then you will select the normative years you want to compare against. So at this time, we only have 2020, 2021 um, academic year, uh, but obviously as time goes on and more data is entered into care, more academic years to compare um, will become available. And then after completing this step, you um, will click the search and compare now button to generate the report. And this is a, an example of what the report will look like. Um, on the report page uh, itself, there are multiple sections of data that programs can review, such as tuition, teaching and curriculum, postgraduate salary and positions data, um, as well as satisfaction or graduate satisfaction data. Um, and then you'll have the ability to print off um, or save the report to a PDF file. So it's, it's that simple. Um, now you have a report that enables you to compare your performance over time, as well as compare your performance to a peer group that you select. Um, so first, uh, just to reiterate, reiterate um, this tool provides you with details on critical data elements with uh, comparison to the mean, 25th, 50th, and 75th percentiles on your defined benchmark. And then second, um, this report can, could be very helpful to you as you verify your annual report data. Uh, as well, it can help you improve your performance relative to your peers or against your past performance. Okay, so with, with that said, um, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Anthony, who will discuss the update on US News and World Report Survey. Thanks, Michelle. So um, the US News and World Report Survey typically was done once every three years. Uh, US News delayed it this time, so it's actually once every four years. And the next survey is expected to go out, and we'll, we'll tell you about the timeframes for that. So. Um, Michelle, go to the next slide. So just to kind of give a little historical part with this, um, after the last survey four years ago, or nearly four years ago, um, we had talked to US News and World Report, their chief data strategist, Bob Morrissey, and um, asked him how we can help them along in this process for them. We know US News, and all of you know US News uh, with these surveys has been highly criticized as these surveys are uh, seen as a little bit of a popularity contest. And Bob is very interested, and U.S. News is very interested, 
in some of the data that's provided on our annual reports. There is no guarantee that they will use the data from any of our annual reports. There's no guarantee that they won't use the data from the annual reports. They are deciding on their own what data they will use. And they're also, uh, you know, CAMI has no input on their editorial content. Our data is transparent. It's available on the web. Um, we just, you know, provide to US News uh, the data that they ask for. Um, back on um, in May 6th, we reviewed with Bob some of the data that we had available based on the past annual report, and he's very interested in it. His comment to us at that point was, when will the next year's data be, av be available? And we said, well, Bob, based on our cycle, programs need to complete the annual report by November 15th. But what we're going to open up to programs is the ability to enter in more recent data in a period July through September that, again, we would make available to U.S. News on their request. So timeframes right now, June 22nd is this webinar, July 1st through August 30th. If you can get your graduates, your recent graduates surveyed, and enter in the annual report data for the just completed academic year, as well as annual report data that you know, like for tuition and number of students enrolled for the year 2022-2023, get that in. On September 1st, we will provide the data to the US News and World Report to meet their timelines. I can't extend these timelines. I have no impact on their editorial content. Their timeframes on when they're getting the survey out are kind of solid. Um, can I negotiate on them? No. You know, if you don't get the data to us by September 1st and you get it to us by September 30th, but I get that data to US News, it would probably be too late. So July 1st through August 30th, whatever data you can get in, we'll turn that over to US News. Certainly get the second uh, contact in the survey at that point too. September 9th, we'll provide the data to US News and World Report, and then we'll go to the next phase. October 1st through 15th, US News and World Report will um, then begin their reputational survey of program directors. So October 1st through 15th will be their deadline. That's why we need good contact information from you by September 9th. So they will continue to do their reputational survey and that will occur October 1st through 15th. And then in November, US News and World Re Report is projecting that they will release their rankings. November 15th, all programs are required by that date to complete their CAMI annual report data. That's per the CAMI policies. All the data needs to be completed by November 15th. And then uh, if you don't have the data completed by November 15th, as in the past, no difference there, um, Per CAMI's board policies, late fees will begin to accrue on programs. So we've provided you with a little more time at this particular point to get this data in and to begin working on it. So uh, those are the, the timeframes for the programs. Um, again, you should begin collecting and updating data for the annual report um, as early as you can in July. We also gonna ask you to encourage your graduates to respond to the student survey of graduating students that all of you do. Um, we suggest that you aim for at least a 65% response rate or satisfaction and in income levels. Why 65%? That's the, that's the norm. That's the mean of all the programs who've submitted. Uh, some programs have done better, some have done worse, but uh, it seems like that's a good response rate number to kind of aim for. Uh, third, Review your performance on those key indicators with the annual report benchmarking tool. It's your way of looking at your data and saying, do I fit within the norms 
of what's going on in comparison programs that you can select. And then uh, fourth, CAMI will provide to US News and World Report publicly available data, contact information, and technical specifications on our data. But again, we have no influence over the release date and the ranking methodology. Um, so again, today what we talked about was CAMI's annual report, our annual report editor, using the annual report benchmarking as a benchmarking tool off the data that you enter, uh, some timeframes for US News and World Report and timeframes for overall with the CAMI annual report editor data. So with that, um, Michelle, do we have questions in the chat room? Uh, yes, so um, from Kimberly, we have, uh, can you clarify again where to find this tool? So uh, once again, you'll find this tool on uh, the, the care tool, I'm guessing, um, you'll find it um, on the cami.org uh, or cami website. The, uh, carb, the, the, the CARB tool. Oh, the CARB tool. Okay. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Completely. Um, so the CARB tool it will, you have to log into care um, and then in your care uh, profile page mm -hmm. um, in the upper right-hand corner, there's an icon that says CAMI annual report benchmarks. And that um, is where you'll, you'll find this tool. So I could go back to that slide really quick um, right here. So this is, you log into care and then in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see the CAMI uh, annual report benchmarks icon. You just click on that to access the tool. Thank you. Of course. Um, someone asked about uh, clarifying time frames. Um, Julie, was that you? Uh, let me know. Did yeah, I? That, that was me. Um, and and I, I can just say what my question is. So I, if I recall, we all submitted our most recent annual report in February. And so I'm just wondering, while I appreciate the opportunity to update, um, I'm curious, I, I wonder if every program is going to be able to do it. And isn't it perhaps sufficient for this purpose to use what we all certified in February? Uh, yeah, and, and and you certify that in or March. In, uh, in no, well, actually, it was due November, and I know a couple people it was didn't due have November? The graduate. A, a, a couple people didn't have the graduate student survey completed, so okay. we gave okay. a little uh, wiggle time for, for those few programs to get it in. But um, all annual reports are due November fifteenth okay. of every year. Um, yes, we are providing the data from that we're offering available to you at your option. If you wanna get the, your more recent data to US News and World Report, you can get it. We will give them two years worth of data um, if you have it. If you can't get it in July and August, totally understand you have till November 15th to do it. But yeah, no, it, so yeah. so my question kind of still stands, I guess. So sorry, I, I messed up that time frame, but it, it does seem just for consistency, it might be better to use what we all certified in November rather than having some programs have two years. And I, uh, Julie, I, I hear you. Uh, no, I understand. Um, this was U.S. News and World Report request, and you know mm. we're you know if if programs do have it, we'll provide it. If they don't, you know we won't. But if if programs can get it together by September first, it'd be great. Again, I have no input on their on their ranking methodology, um, on their um, you know on on their approach. Uh, what data will be used for two? Uh, Amy Landry, what data will be used for places with two reports, executive and residential? Good question, Amy. So um, when U.S. News will look at the data. Um, when they've done the reputational survey, the survey's done at the university level. So even though you have executive and residential programs, US News will ask for the ranking of the, the program at the university level. I'm not quite sure how they're gonna use all the different data coming in from multiple programs from one university. They know that that's an issue, how they, how they need to deal with it. Um, 
Dr. Mohammed, you have a, a question. I see a raised hand. Hello, everyone, and uh, good evening, Saudi's time. And, uh, thank you very much for your informative uh, session. It was uh, very helpful uh, for me personally. Uh, my question is, since we are um, having a, a, a program in Saudi Arabia, would it be possible for us to be part of the uh, U.S. news ranking, or uh, that's exclusively for you guys? In the states. Now, th thank you very much for that question. It's a good one. Uh, right now, you're a candidate program, so you haven't been accredited, and U.S. News only ranks on accredited programs. Um, I don't know what will happen at the next time of their survey, whether they'll expand it to include non-U.S. programs, but, um, um, you know, thank you for that question. But uh, right now, it's only accredited programs. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, if we are going to be, uh, uh, I see a question about if you're going to be accredited in November, will we be eligible for rankings? Um, I, uh, it's a very good question. I know last year or last time this happened, uh, one program was uh, was up for accreditation and the board met in time for that program to be considered within the US News and World Report rankings. I'm, I'm not sure what the timeframes will kind of look like on that with the board meetings in US News right now. I would say for programs that are up for new accreditation in the fall, get the data in there um, so that way you, you can be considered, but I'm, I'm just not sure of the specifics on the timeframes from us news and then our board meetings, but again, only accredited programs, um, can be in the rankings. Um, as the questions changed on the student survey from last year, no, the questions are exactly the same and what Michelle is putting together with the help from some programs and appreciate, uh, there's a few I, I know on this call right now, we asked for some sample surveys. There's a large consistency, and I really am really happy about that, large consistency on what these programs are looking at. Um, and that's consistent with what we put out. Michelle is gonna send around a sample survey to kind of use based off of the questions that are on there, uh, but uh, it will not change from last year. And the sample survey is just to provide some guidance to you, but um, all of you have, who've asked it last year have asked it correctly. Some of our people are out of town on a conference. Will you provide a recording of the session? Yes, we will. We also know that um, we hit our limit of the number of people who could be on this session, so that recording will also be available to them. Uh, September 1st is for us not 90 days from graduation, which is June. So some concerns about em employment after graduation numbers reporting by September 1st. I totally understand um, um, if you, if again, for the student survey, if you wanna wait, um, you can, if you, if you wanna get it in by then, um, you can as well. Uh, are candidacy programs eligible? Uh, no, candidacy programs are not eligible for US News and World Report. Are there other fields where U.S. News and World Report uses accreditation data to inform their rankings? Um, we know that for some of the larger rankings, U.S. News and World Report uses additional data uh, that could include information from the U.S. Department of Education and other sources. From the rankings in which, um, if you want to call it, from, from smaller program rankings, um, the answer is no. Uh, so within rankings like, uh, you know, uh, healthcare management programs or some of the other specific programs that are out there, they haven't. AACSB, they do. Uh, for the business school uh, rankings, they do. So um, it would be a, definitely a first time change in the healthcare management field um, and uh, puts us in the, um, the major leagues, if you would, with U.S. News and World Report. Um, 
will you clarify primary contacts, please? So the primary contacts are the, we're assuming the program director is the primary contact. So that's you. The secondary contact is the program, is the person that you would recommend that the second survey be sent to by US News and World Report. Uh, so do we list our second person on US News in our annual report? For both residential and online programs or just one of those uh, again each university gets two picks so i would say yes just try not to provide multiple names in there um, we'll go back and review them to make sure we get them but each university gets two picks i think that the problem the, the most problematic uh, for me is, is is bu which has a school of public health and then a an MBA program that's accredited. So uh, it's probably the program director from the School of Public Health and the program director from the, the business school that will be the two picks. That's how it was done four years ago. Um, can the secondary contact person be an administrator or should both be faculty dean? It's entirely up to you. So whoever you select to be the secondary person, it's your choice. And that's what it was in the past. Um, any sense of the data US News would be based on the two to three averages versus most recent. Again, I, I um, US News is looking at the data, is looking at our data dictionary, is examining the information that's available in there. I don't know if they would use a weighted average of two to three years. I don't know if they're gonna just use the most recent data that's available. I, I don't, I, I honestly, I honestly don't, don't know. So, uh, and yeah, and I understand uh, the pandemic, um, you know, has kind of had some changes in there, but I think if anything, it's, it's, it's been universal. So um, let's see, to publish only data that we all submitted in the, I appreciate the update, but I'm wondering, oh, and we answered that timeframes. Okay, let me, let me, I think we addressed all the questions in the chat. Is there any more? Anyone else? Uh, I, I uh, the care tool. Just so you know, we have made significant improvements on it. Um, it's not a perfect tool still, so so be patient with it. We've made improvements from last year. We spent more time and resources getting the benchmarking tool up and running this year because we really thought that will help you along to be able to create peer groups that make sense for you. Not ones that we define, but ones that you define. Um, next year, I'm really, uh, uh, we've been talking to the developer and uh, Michelle and our team about where do we go next year and how do we make improvements on the tool that we've got next year. And I, I'm, I, I, you know, I think you're gonna see some really kind of cool things by this time next year, just like, you know, last year, uh, we were hoping to get CARB up and running this year, and we did, the annual report benchmarker. So I, th I think you'll continue to see improvements over time. Um, but, um, you know, um, all right. Well, I appreciate everyone's time on this call. Um, if there are any questions individually you'd like to ask Michelle or I, please let us know, send us an email, or drop us a call, and we'll be talking to you. Thanks again, everyone.